Hey, welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar podcast brought to you by the coaches and clients of RT Fitness Durham, Sunderland, and of course, the Barbell Club, where we take you from complete beginner to photo shoot. Ready? If you need any details on our programs, just clink, click, clink, click the link below and it'll take you to a call booting system to book in a call with Sarah. Here she'll discuss your goals, program details, and pricing options. So on today's episode, we have our long-term client, Nikki. She's been with us three years now. Um, incredible story. Um, I mean, she's dropped six stone in that time. And I mean, it's not always just about the weight loss. It's about all the health benefits will come with that. And obviously, fitness levels rising. Um, Nikki has done everything what we've asked and stuck it out. She hasn't went stupid on her calories or went all out intensity within the workout. She's just done as we promote here at Art A Fitness and is now that obviously six stone down. Incredible journey, incredible woman, and um, really pleased we had this talk. So many takeaways for myself and for everybody who is ever thinking about joining us here at Art A Fitness. So please enjoy this one. Right then, welcome Nikki. <laughs> so uh, straight away, um, who is Nikki? But in a work-life balance of how you can fit in your training and all the rest of it. Go yeah, for it. Um, I mean, obviously, I've been with you guys now for just over three years. Um, yeah. January. Uh, it was the January, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. January twenty twenty, just uh-huh. be- just before lockdown. Yeah. Um, I work full time as a data scientist right. for the NHS, and up until COVID, we were based in the office. But since then, I work solely from home, so I have a, a full time desk job. So right, I have I have to make the time to do my steps because putting around the house, I'd probably do about a thousand a day max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like most people from home now. Yeah. So is that still a full like eight hour stint in the house as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, I make sure I take a break at lunchtime. Right. To take a walk. Do you, did you find though when you st- first started doing working from home, did you just work through that as well, or? No, I never did in the end. I, okay. I think I'm probably one of the few people that would say COVID actually helped me get into a good routine. Right. Okay. Because we got sent home from work and had to stay at home, and I'd just started. My journey with you yeah, guys yeah, yeah. so I was in in the headspace to be motivated so right as we couldn't do much else I I was missing the switch off time my commute from work used to give me from finishing my day at work where did you get, where we commute to How, my oh. office is in Newburn so Where's sort of that? north New, north Newcastle <laughs> right okay so it's about a 40, 45 minute to an hour journey in the car each way every day to get there and back so, and that's time back? Yeah. yeah, so that was time back, but then I used that time, certainly my evening commute time, I started to go for a walk in that time. Right. To give myself that same cut off that I used to have from finishing work and driving home. Yeah. I would go out the house and walk for that time. And I was working in my living room, so it broke up like my office. It'd be in my office to back be in my house again. Yes, get you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if I just turned my computer off and walked across the sitting room and sat on the sofa, it was like 10 seconds and it was like, <laughs> now what am I going to do? Which is probably a lot of people haven't implemented that. Yeah. Well, more, most people haven't yeah. implemented that. I know we were banging the drum about that a little bit mm. when, when people were going back, use that commute time to like to go take yourself yeah. for a walk, but you've actually yeah. took it upon and done it. when we were in the office, obviously the session I came to, I would just come straight from work and come here so I didn't yeah. go home. So I kept kind of the same routine when we were doing the home workouts. I'd finish right. work, go out for a walk, do the gym session. So it, was, it stayed the same. Or sometimes I'd do the gym session and then go out for a walk, depending how my, how my day had worked, sort of meetings-wise and yeah. things. But I always did those same things in the same same pattern to Brilliant. keep a routine. That's mint. <laughs> and I still, I, because yeah. it became such a routine and because uh-huh. I still work at home, I still do it now. Yeah. How, how have you kept that up? It's, it's <laughs> just become part of my day. Yeah. That's just what I do. I don't even really think about it anymore. And, well, 
just recently I bought a puppy as well who needs to go out on a walk. Yeah. So. so that helps on top. I now don't look a loony out and for a walk in the rain. People are like, oh, she's just walking the dog. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. What is she doing? Just <laughs> instead of walking on a leader yeah. with nothing on. <laughs> my dog's in the trees, honest. Yeah, I, I'd meant that. Like, I'm, for people to get into that habit, I mean, it's a tough yeah. But obviously you've done it for, for, uh, for three years. Three years, yeah. yeah. I mean, work helped us a lot as well in that we now have a no meetings hour at lunchtime between 12 and 1. All of our calendars are booked out. I mean, if it's with an external person, then we would still have the meeting. Right. But internally, there's a big drive to not put meetings over people's lunch so that you have time. Brilliant. It mainly started in the winter when it was dark so that people had chance during the day to go out and get some daylight. <laughs> right, okay, yeah, to. yeah. Um, but it was such a success, they continue that now. So as a general rule, right. between 12 and 1, none of us have any meetings. So I take God, that that's it. that is really good. opportunity on a lunchtime to go out. You do eat, though. Oh, of course. Well. Yeah. Of course I eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're eating, eating between... That, that's brilliant. That actually, that's a really good idea. I hope it translates across all companies, to be fair. And is that through NHS or is it? Is yeah, yes, it is as well. It, well, I work for the oh. Business Services Authority, so we're okay. sort of an authority of the NHS. Right, okay. So it, it's a thing we do. It's not a whole NHS. NHS, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. But it's what our organisation does. So. I hope it floods in. Something along those lines, because I think um, a lot of people either do work through the brick or meetings can be called at any time of the day from what I've heard from people yep. who yep. Um, work from home mm -hmm. it's like I've got this meeting this meeting this meeting this meeting it's like I'm stuck on my computer all day yeah. and I can't get my steps in but mm -hmm. hope, hopefully something like that would um, go along so the big thing I like to know is what is what what for you obviously where I mean have you dieted through your life yes yeah, yeah. yes this <laughs> time that I've lost weight was the third time I've lost a significant amount of weight right. in my life. So what was the big, that moment of like, this is it? Or was it at that point? Or um, you tell me. At, at the point I joined here, there was a couple of reasons I did it. Right. One, I'd reached a point I'd promised myself the last time I'd lost weight, I would never right, go okay. back past. And I'd hit that point. Which was? It was a certain pair of trousers that I had okay, and right. if I got to the point they didn't fit anymore I wasn't buying any new ones and I had, right. I had to stop Yeah, and I was having a lot of trouble with my knee Right. and I'd seen a consultant and been having physio and things and basically I've got no cartilage in the outside of my right, knee okay. so it's not something that's going to get you know it's not going to grow back it's not yeah. going to get better and he basically said I had two choices I either had to try and lose some weight and strengthen it or he was talking about surgery of breaking my leg and re-angling my knee so the weight was going through the side that I yep. cut, <laughs> which sounded pretty drastic really. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I took the other option of losing, losing a bit of weight. weight. How did they approach that? Because I, I feel as though when doctors have to tell someone, look, you've got to lose weight, did, the, did they approach it as a direct thing or were they like sort of just like, you might need to lose a little bit of weight? No, he was very... Very Was direct. he? Right, okay, in, that's, that's in, good. There's two surgical options, or you can lose some weight and right. strengthen like the muscles. Yeah. And there, was no, there was no beating around the bush. Was there not? Like, that's with that, I like that. Yeah, and, well, yeah, it was the truth. They, yeah. they were the only options I had. Right, that, that, I, I like that because I, I always feel as though um, they, they might find it hard because their, their job is to prescribe, yeah. generally. Yeah not to tell people to, right, eat healthy, do this. Their job is to give you pills, portions, fix you up, whatever. Okay. So I like that approach. Yeah. And, but I, I think when I made the call and spoke to Sarah, uh -huh. I was still a bit in denial of how, how much work I needed to do. Right. Because I was very adamant I was only staying for three months and then it would be the golf yes, season. Yes, now I remember, the, yeah. the golf season would be enough to sort me out. And I realised pretty quickly from like the sessions we were doing and I was uh -huh. seeing results yeah. very quickly and but I also realised the intensity I was working at to burn the calories and uh -huh. to stay on track just playing two or three rounds of golf a week <laughs> from like April was not it wasn't going to cut it yeah and, that, and I mean you do, yeah. it's a big walk or golf oh I mean it, it yeah it's not insignificant exercise but still in the scheme of what I was doing here uh -huh. 
you know, training four times a week and then doing the steps on top. Yes, it would get my steps in, but yeah. that would be pretty much it. And I wasn't going to get get the results I was getting by just doing that. Yeah. So that's it. so from so obviously because you, you did say three months, didn't you? And I, I, I remember that and. So that, was there a switch from that three month part? Well, it was, wasn't it? To that, like, oh, fuck, I've got to do more. Yeah, I'd say, I would probably sit there six to eight weeks in. Right. I'd probably lost nearly a stone already by that I mean, point. Yeah. And, you know, I was feeling good and stronger. And, and I'd say that's when I probably gave myself a talking to in some ways of like, right. just golf isn't going to fix it. And then yeah. the pandemic came along and I couldn't play golf either, so... <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I kinda, yeah. Which know. probably would have been one of the most safest things to play during uh, the yeah. pandemic. So, you know, you guys did all the stuff you did for us yeah. in lockdown with the online we workouts tried. and <laughs> stuff like that. So I just threw myself into that. <laughs> yeah, you did. You really did as well. I always seen you on there. <laughs> yes, you were always there, always there, next to your office. Yeah, and again, <laughs> again it, it broke up the day. Yeah. Because at the time... You know, I was allowed, we, were, we could work flexibly at home, so I used to start work, then stop to do the morning session. Right. And then, as I say, finish my day, either finish in time to do the session, then go for a walk, or yeah. if I had We had the afternoon session on as well, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Or I finished, went for a walk, and then did, did the afternoon session as well. Yeah, we did try. We were, mm, I, 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 I thought we did well, actually. Yeah, yeah. Say, we, we did, uh, we, we tried our best, and I think um, from, well, it was for everybody, really. Yeah. And, I really like the routine. When I was we going to say, it, it got me through that period. Yeah. And as I say, got me into a discipline that has just continued since, really. Yeah. And I don't know if I would have got into that routine without it. Right. So that, yeah. I mean, we, for, uh, we, that was one of our missions, get people in that routine. Mm. I mean, we hammered it. Obviously, yeah. some people went the other way, got pissed every <laughs> Monday to Friday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of you actually did stick it out and go through it at the end. I mean, so towards the end, there might have only been one or two of you on the Zoom um, workouts, but it did keep a lot of people in check. I mean, at work, we used to check in with each other and stuff, but I live on my own. So yeah. again, it was actually just sometimes a chance to see other, other, other human people. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you because know, it could be a long day sometimes, otherwise without sort of physically seeing somebody else. Yeah. So, and, we, and we did miss that. Yeah, we turning did. on Zoom and the camera and seeing other people jumping about. Yeah. It was, just, <laughs> it was, it was nice some days, really. It was, it was. I mean, we always had a five-minute big crack mm. at the start. Um, I enjoyed it, to be fair. Like, I wouldn't want to do it again. But no, if, but I, if but that I, we I would, would do it again if, if that was what, yeah, we, had what we had to do. But, yeah, I, w I wouldn't want to go back. But equally, I can see a lot of benefits I got from what... Covid brought me at the time to be yeah. fair. Good, good stuff. So, what's been your results so far? Um, I lost six stone in total. Fuck. Which yes. Is <laughs> Eighty-four pounds is that roughly? It's about that. Yeah. Um, it is. Yes. Yes. Well done. <laughs> so, I'm normally quick on maths, but yes, that was right. Yeah, yeah. And I lost most of that in the first year. I think I lost yeah, about did, five yeah. stone in the first year. I was uh -huh. here. And then lost sort of another stone into the second year. And since then, I've maintained pretty much around there. I bounce around by probably half a stone right, up okay. and down, which yeah. I've, I'm comfortable with that now. Yeah. At first, I found it hard ever seeing the numbers go up slightly on the scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is maintenance. You're it, never going to be spot, spot on the same weight every time you step on the scales. It's just not, not realistic. So it was learning to get my head around that right okay and so actually being pleased when they stay the same or as pleased as seeing them go down because I think maintaining way harder than actually losing yes it is because you're in the zone you see the scales go down every week and you're like oh yeah <laughs> but then you hit a point where you don't you're not trying to lose anymore so the scales don't move but you've still got to make choices you can't just say oh which was where I've always fallen down in the past. I've like, oh, I've reached where I want to be now. I can just have that little bit extra, yeah. this, that, and the other, and it, it doesn't work like that. No, but you but you you found balance now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you found balance? I think it's 
acceptance for the first time of what I really need to do to balance. Right. You know, as I say, you can't say, oh, well, I've done all this work, I've lost six stone, I've reached yeah. my target, now I can just go and have five beers at the weekend or I can have... Because you can. Uh -huh. but if you want to stay where you're at, you've got to pay it back sometime. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, it's fine to go and enjoy yourself, but to balance it out, you have to... You have to either do more exercise or eat less on other days to account yeah. for it. And I don't think I'd ever been prepared or wanted to do it enough. Right. Where, as I say, because of my knee and I know it, it's not something that's going to fix itself, uh -huh. that if I don't maintain where I'm at, the problems will come back. Yeah. I mean, now I was at the stage where even just walking around the supermarket doing my grocery shopping each week, it would hurt. Right. To, you know, last year I did what was it, the 20-mile 20, 20 ninja challenge walk? Yes, yeah. And yeah, it grumbled a little bit, which it's always going to when I do uh -huh. stuff like that, but it wouldn't have even been on my radar to try and walk that kind of distance previously, because I couldn't. With you, if you think of that 20-mile walk, but you would have had 84 pounds on your back. Mm. You try, but the thing is, yeah. if you try now and do that, yeah, that's going to flare that nail. Oh, absolutely. Like, that, say, that, that would be a big bag. So <laughs> I think it's a reality of... If I want to stay as active as I am, which I do want to do, yeah. I have to keep making the right choices to do that. I right. can't. I can't have everything. <laughs> yeah. And nobody can actually. The more you get to sort of know the people you train with, yeah, the people who are in shape and lean and doing it, they all work to get there. Yeah. There's very few people I think who are lucky enough to be able to do and eat whatever they want and stay the same. Unless, the, I mean, the, those people, I mean, they're, they're not, people think they're an anomaly. Yeah. But it's not, it's because they've probably got an active job. Yeah. They've probably got an active job and then they are training on top mm. and they probably have a dog where they walk loads on a weekend and they are having a few takeaways and a few beers every week. Yeah. And people are saying, how, how do they, like, because that's sometimes in like a partnership, mm. like, oh, they like, I eat this and I put all the weight on and they mm. don't, but... The dip, obviously, an office yeah. job yeah. compared to a factory worker yeah. or a bricklayer or something like that. I mean, most bricklayers, are, they're not in shape, but that, because yeah. they're eating too many English breakfasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their calorie balance is a little bit too high. Yeah. I think it's so make, just making different choices and like truly understanding like how long it takes to burn off some of the calories. Yep. Like, I would have thought nothing in the past of, say, popping to the coffee shop and having a cup and a, a muffin. Mm -hmm. There's and how many calories is that? 650, 700 calories probably. Yeah. And that's like two and a bit barbell sessions to burn that back off. Yep. And I'm a bit like, I actually don't want that piece of cake that much. Yeah. Or on days if I have had it, it'll be instead of a meal now and not just an additional extra because I was having a snack. Well, because that's how people see it. Mm. If people go for a coffee and the cake, they don't think that it's a meal. No. And then they say, I don't eat that much. But they're going out for these little things, what are six, seven hundred calories. Yeah. And or again, you know, my regular breakfast and lunch put together probably comes to that. So it's like two, two of my standard meals yeah. just in a snack. It's, it, it's and scary. And it's frightening. It is. <laughs> Same as, you know, a couple of pints of beer. Yeah. There's another 550, 600 yeah. calories without... Depend, depending on the beer, yeah. yeah. Without, without even trying. <laughs> Do you still drink beer? Not as much as I used to. Right. Again, I don't really drink in the house. I never have on my own. Yeah. So again, lockdown, I never started doing that, which yeah. was a big, a big thing. A big so thing, yeah, yeah. Zoom if, I, if I'm out, <laughs> I will yeah. have, some, have alcohol. But equally, sometimes I just choose not to either. Because again, depending on what else I've done that week, having another thousand calories just for the sake of it. Yeah. I can take or leave alcohol these days. It, it, I enjoy it when uh -huh. I have it, but it doesn't ruin my day or my night if I went out and didn't drink so yeah if i need to balance something somehow then sometimes i'll just not drink brilliant just a bit like well it's so unnecessary so you as your views on so just say these three years as your views on alcohol like changed then uh not particularly as i say there's still right. times i enjoy it it's uh -huh. just i know i've got to make choices of what i have if i want to stay where i'm at and right I am a food person. And okay, I'd, right. I'd probably say rather have a dessert after my meal than have two or three glasses of wine with the meal. Right, okay. So to me, it's just making a choice. 
Right. Some days I might want the wine instead, so I'll do that instead. Yeah. But it's very rare now I would do all of it. Yeah. So is, so is that is safe? So if you did go out for a meal, is that the kind of choice you would make? Like, say, um, it's either going to be wine or the dessert? Mm. Yeah. That's say, good, that. Sometimes I will have it all because I've yeah. either adjusted my week to allow for that or know that I'll yeah. walk a bit further or, you know, balance it. Sometimes if I know I want more, I'll do more. Because and this is probably sparse though, is it like? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. my day-to-day -day sort of diet has been pretty much the same for three years. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That, that's my next question. <laughs> well, um, so, so, I mean, obviously, what, like, I've, I've wrote it down as what's been your process to achieve this, but it's like, like what, so what it does you basically day-to-day -day look like nu nutrition-wise as well? Because I am interested in... Um, yeah. I mean, I'd hold my hands up and say, probably nutritionally, I could still do a bit better. I'm not a massive fruit or vegetable eater, so I, I, could, yeah. I could probably put more of that into my diet. Right. But equally, the diet I have now and the size and mm -hmm. weight and things I'm at, yeah. it's the best it's ever been in my life. So right. I, I don't beat myself up too much about that. Yeah. And as I say, I, I am a food person. I uh -huh. probably still think about food a lot more than the average person does, <laughs> but I've worked with that rather than trying yeah. to be something that I'm not, uh -huh. and thinking, oh, I should eat salad because I'm trying to lose weight. I hate yeah. salad. So do I. So I, d I don't eat it. Yeah, I haven't had one for years. I think, again, possibly lockdown helped in that I actually had some time to sit and think about what meals do I enjoy and right. find versions of it or ways to fit most of that into, uh -huh. my, into my routine. Yeah. So I have probably, most mornings in the week, I have a protein pancake for breakfast. Right. Um, Flavour? Chocolate. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. Um, so I would have that in a cup. Do you have any, like, um, syrupy, like the, the zero syrup? I sometimes put zero syrup or sometimes right, okay. chocolate protein spread. Right, okay, so right. So it's probably not the world's healthiest breakfast, but equally it's 350 calories, 40 yeah. grams of protein, and sets me up for the morning. So Brilliant, yeah. Then I'll have a mid-morning snack uh -huh. with the calories... You know, if you we were working on the 1,700 of okay, 500 right, calories yeah. for each meal plus a snack, yeah, uh -huh. I'll have slightly less for breakfast so I can have a mid-morning snack. Okay, and what's again, the snack? Again, it varies sometimes. Usually a protein bar of right, some sort. Right, okay. Or something like biltong, which is low yes, calorie, yeah, yeah, yeah. high protein. I haven't had that for ages. I, I haven't it. had any for a while, actually. <laughs> but yeah. uh, lunch, I generally make... I think it's a Slimming World recipe of like right. crustless quiche with just eggs, yes. cottage cheese. Yes, I've had that before. I, put I got sick of that very fast. Yeah. Oh, I've been, I've been eating that for about three years I've now. Been, yeah, it's actually one of the really good ones from Slimming World, that one. Yeah, and I put yeah. like chicken and ham and some yeah. fat cheese on the top with some chilli flakes or something just to give it a bit of, yeah, yeah, bit yeah, of yeah. excitement. Yeah. So I'll have that with maybe, I don't know, a packet of quavers or right, okay. some, something yeah. like that. So again, uh -huh. it's about another 350 400 right. calorie lunch, then I'll have a protein yogurt or something mid-afternoon before I train at the gym, uh -huh. then a five, 600 calorie evening meal, and then whatever. Which is normally? Again, it varies, I've, it varies around <laughs> about ten, 10 different meals. Some of them <laughs> oh, are- does it? Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, some yeah. of them are just like ready meals from the supermarkets. To right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a slave to the kitchen. I, I yeah, don't yeah. enjoy cooking especially. So again, I found a range of things, so I don't know, there's a, a chicken jambalaya from Sainsbury's, which is about right. 400 calories, okay. which is nice, and I yeah. enjoy eating it. And I say there's a whole range of, sometimes I'll make like an Indian-style curry, but I'll right. have cauliflower rice instead of normal rice. Yeah, brilliant. Which I know a lot of people are like, <laughs> It stinks a fart when it, you might wave it. It. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't taste the best, but equally, with a spicy curry, I can't tell whether it's rice or, right, or okay. cauliflower, yeah. and you know, saves you another. 150 calories. Yeah. So. And but then it's, it's little changes yeah, and, and, and it works. On an evening, I'll have probably another snack after tea. Right. Of, that'll be when, if I've got the calories left, I'll just have a bit of chocolate or, yeah. you know, something. I used to call it a treat, but I don't call it a treat anymore. It's, right. It's just what I choose to spend my calories on that day. Yeah. So, so that's like three meals and three snacks. Yeah. Yeah. And that was on 1700. Now on maintenance, I can have uh -huh. a few more calories, but. I've always just left my basic meals the same. Right. And either, you know, had slightly higher calorie snacks or had 
an extra snack or something like that. Yeah. Because if there's days I do need, or like after a holiday, if I need to lose a few pounds after, right. I find it easier if I've kept the basic meals the same, uh -huh. then it's easier to get back into that routine rather than suddenly on a weekend, always allowing myself to have 3,000 calories on a Saturday yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I find it much easier keeping everything level. Right. And by keeping the same meals and everything that I was doing on 1,700, uh -huh. I know it works and it's just a safety net. I don't have to think about it. I still track all the time. I yeah. could probably not track a lot of the time because my weeks are so similar that. Yeah. But equally, when you do have that night out or go somewhere, I like to know what I've had so that I can, okay. so I can adjust if I need to. Yeah. Rather than just say, oh, well, that was probably about 3,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the guesstimate, to, yeah. Four, four and a half thousand. <laughs> as I say, I, I realize I have to keep a balance. And, mm -hmm. And if I don't keep a track of what I've had, I can't do that. Right. Brilliant. So, so with all that weight loss, we, we, did you literally stick to the 1700 throughout? Pretty much. I think I used to average around 1650-ish a day. Right, only 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, that was because I didn't say always measure the amount of milk I put in my coffee. I measured it yes. a couple of times yeah, to yeah, know yeah, roughly course, what I put yeah. in. So I always did it that way because I thought, well, during each day, there's probably a little bit out here and there, but yeah. equally, it gave me an extra sort of 250 calories, 300 right. calories for the week. So if a friend said, oh, do you fancy popping around for a beer? I could still have that without adjusting anything yeah. else. And if I didn't have anything else, then I was just those few calories up on the week. That's amazing. And it works. Yeah, <laughs> basically. It, it does, but you know it is because like um, when whenever we're talking me and Sarah's ever talking to like the clients on nutrition or anything I look like and she'll say like this person's not losing weight this blah 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 and I'm saying think of Nikki mm -hmm. Nikki's done the 1700 calories and she's done it and it's like it's bang on and because a lot of people say can I go it down to 1200 calories yeah. and it's like well I haven't done this for this amount of time and, and and I mean the big thing what we're always saying to the people who say that like the 1200 calories is it's a, a 1200 calories is a seven-year-old girl's calories mm -hmm. Not a 40-year-old mama three who has, wants to do four sessions a week, kids' classes, 10,000 steps, blah, 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 blah. It's a mistake I've probably made in the past that I've learned from of right. trying to do things too quickly. Yes. You know, I, I had to accept I've had a weight problem my whole adult life. I've gone up and down, and most of the time I've been on the heavier side. Yeah. Like, often people, if they see me, I before and after pictures now are like, oh, I bet you can't believe that's you. Like the original right. picture, yeah. and I was like, actually, it's the other way. That still was more how I've been my yes. whole life. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, in the past, I've tried to adapt a lifestyle or do things, as you say, like take my cal calories ridiculously low, which it works for a very short of period of time, but I knew I needed to change my lifestyle and yeah. I had, it had to be a lifestyle change. So I had to build something that was maintainable and 1200 calories a day for me is not, not no. the most. You know, it's not I for anybody, it's, again, it's absolutely not for anyone. From sort of trying to average at 1700, that if I had had a bigger day at the weekend, I could do 15, just under 1500 calories for a few days, but yeah. I, I struggle with yeah. less than that. Because that's taking away one of your little snacks, isn't it there? Yeah, or <laughs> taking, you know, it, taking away something that, Yeah. I, I, was, I would struggle. As I say, short term, I could do it. Uh -huh. So I knew I had to The find ninja tracking. Yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can ninja <laughs> track for a little while, but doing that permanently, I would fall off the wagon. Yeah. Because I'd, I would push myself too much the other way and have the binge that people have. Yeah. Where I found a way to feel satisfied with the food I had every day at, at that level and it on track, so... And this, in, in, I mean, it's been a big push this year of like repeating meals with clients and trying mm. to tell them to repeat meals. And that's what you've done all along. And obviously you've found that balance of just, yeah. just fucking repeat and you'll be all right. Yeah. I say most people in their life, their meals are pretty, pretty routine, I would say. Oh, you know, of course they are. Yeah. So just find things you don't mind eating. And yeah. Just keep doing it over and over again. I say I've probably got maybe around 10 and every now and then, you know, I'll try something new and if I like it, it will stay. And if I don't, then right. I default back to some of the D old yeah. stuff. But, but it works. I say, yeah. when you know it works and 
I found all the meals I eat, I enjoy eating. And it's not like, oh, I've got to have this because that'll hit, hit the calories. Yeah. I've found ways to fit in pretty much everything that I would want. One thing you said there, like you said, my diet could be better. I mm. could have more fruit and veg in. Mm. Um, I've had this in the past with people where they say my meals, which is pretty much yeah. the same. Like they yeah. don't have that much veg in. Um, and they've like, says, where's your veg or mm. whatever else. And I mean, them are a lot heavier overweight. Mm. And I think this is what the balance is. It's like, yes, when well, me, you, Sarah, <laughs> and, and, more, and probably more clients as well, don't eat that much veg, but what... I mean, I'm not sure what the balance would be, but is it better to be overweight and eating your veg? Mm. Yeah. Or actually being lean and not eating that much veg? Mm. It's like, what are the health implications from either end? Because I, I haven't had my blood works done or anything to see where, like, if I'm deficient in or anything yeah. like that. I, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know what the, what the answer would be there, because where you think it is that, but it's like, is it really? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and as I say again, just from how I feel, and uh -huh. you know, I, I do have a health problem, which, yeah. you know, so I have had blood tests and stuff right. in the last few years. And yeah. Sort of even on the, the regime I'd moved to, everything was fine. Everything blood-wise was spot on. So, right, okay. So from that side, for me, the, the lack of a few vegetables, no, it, it doesn't seem to have caused <laughs> any, any problems any, yeah. compared to all the health benefits I've got from, for the first time in my life, actually being classed as what would be a normal body weight yeah. for me. As I say, I didn't, just didn't get too yeah. hung up on the fruit and vegetables. I know, and it's like, I try, I, keep tr I still yeah. keep trying. Yeah. And like, it's just not, I mean, I'll... I'll I'll definitely have maybe, I'm lying. Um, yeah, I'll probably have a piece of fruit every two, three days. Yeah. Like if the, I, we always buy bananas and apples mm. and they always go a little bit brown and it's like, shit, I've got to eat it now. Yeah. I mean, Jake, me oldest, he'll always just scoff loads of them in any way. But um, so I, like, I did have one today, um, but it is every few days. But then with me, me chicken, rice and veg. Yeah, but I have chicken thigh meat, so it's a little bit different and seasoned to fuck. Um, I always put a handful of mixed frozen veg yeah. in with them, and that's it for the week. I'm probably pretty much in that camp too. <laughs> yeah, but then I have chilli sauce, and I'm sure that'll have like the beans and yeah, stuff in. Yeah, I was going to say, there's various things you'll get some from that you probably don't realise. Yeah. As I say, I've decided, you know, there's only, only so many things you can do, and if I haven't got five portions of fruit and veg every day. Yeah. It's not done me any harm so far. <laughs> it would probably be because of the, it, it must be down to the taste for you, is it? Yeah, yeah. the texture of some things, I just really struggle. So I think from obviously me and you and definitely Sarah, if we tried to implement that, we would start hating that food yeah. and not stay on point. Yeah, and again, fallen into that trap in the past. Yeah, and, and that's what yeah. people do on diets, the 1200 calories and all the rest yeah. of it, they start hating the diet because it doesn't, mm. and you have found stuff what you like, what fucking works. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, I, like, I love it. <laughs> um, has it been challenging that, like the 1700? It wasn't as challenging as I thought once, right. as I say, I got my head into gear. and actually spent the time thinking about what, what did I want to eat and like balancing. I mean, I suppose as I've got a data, base, a job based, based around data and things, yeah. I kind of saw it as a challenge in the end, like a bit of a game of right. what, what can I fit into that calories and yeah. still hit the protein Yes. rather than what's the minimum I can eat. I was a bit more like, right, 1700 works. So uh -huh almost what's the most I can fit into that. Or what Brilliant. variety yeah, yeah, yeah. of things can I fit into and a day. And that's without veg, so that's even harder, really, yeah. isn't it? What can I fit into a day to hit that? That makes me feel satisfied mm -hmm. that I actually enjoy. So, yeah, again, I suppose lockdown helped in a way early days because shopping was such a nightmare. I literally yeah. went shopping once a week, bought right. my week's food, so if I ate it all we in the first... week shops. <laughs> yeah. If I ate it all in the first couple of days, then I wasn't going back to the shops. So right, okay. I guess, you know, stuff like having a bit of chocolate as a treat. I've nearly used the treat word, but having a bit <laughs> of chocolate every day. If I ate the whole bar on the first night, then I wasn't going to have any more for the rest of the week. Right. So it, 
it helped me balance it out a bit. And then I think it was probably hard for the first, you know, few months of, from completely overeating to getting down to that. But the high protein definitely works. It's the first time I'd ever done like a higher protein diet, and that, that was going to be my next one. Was it? Did you, did you used to up. did you used to eat protein before, or was I did, but not. You know, I've always been a meat eater and things, right, so I've yeah. probably always naturally got a fair amount of protein without uh -huh. really thinking about it. But definitely, I notice now if I don't have a decent chunk of protein in every meal, I just get hungry. You, you must see it like we, we see it as like. Do you, would you would you feel unsatisfied if the meal didn't have protein in? Yeah, probably. Like where like so I, I couldn't just go in and have. Um, two bits of toast, right? No. I would need to put four slices of ham in it. <laughs> Are you the same? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, like, I always base me meal, it has to have X protein in yeah. each meal. And like, I feel just, I just can't do it. And if I've had, if it, it'll be a mental thing in my head of like, I've had this meal without protein. It's like, now I've got to get it back in. Yeah. I would say for me, I would then just be hungry an hour later. So then I'd eat something else as well. <laughs> right. So you think the protein's really been satiating for you as well? Yeah. Good. Definitely. Because it says it is. Yeah. But I'm a heavy meat eater. I'm probably saying, well, he's definitely a big meat eater. <laughs> so it's, but it's like, at, like at, a barbecue, at a barbecue, though, can you eat more meat? I don't know. I've not tried. I'm sure I, I'm sure I could. <laughs> yeah. I think when it comes down to it, because like, it would be hard to eat, say, two chicken breasts yeah. on your plate. Yeah. But if you went to a barbecue... Hmm. You could eat your way through you few, could, yeah, yeah, a few different variations, I yeah. think. Yeah. Do you like a mixed grill? Yeah, again, not something I ever have often. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah, I am most definitely a, a meat eater. And, right. You know, <clears throat> when I first started, there was the big thing of like, everyone should have a day being vegetarian or vegan or, you know, cut down on your meat consumption. I think that first January was like the big push on Veganuary. Yeah. Wasn't where, it? I was working my way through the farmyard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've, it's never, um, I can't remember if I've ever done you it. Know, big respect to the people who can do it, but yeah. I, I just, I couldn't give up meat. No, it's, it's, it's really yeah. nice though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, do, 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 do. do you think you'll ever go back to that weight? I'm, com I'm probably the closest to ever being able to say no. <laughs> right, okay. I'll say I've, I have got history of going up and down. Yeah. Um, but I've never, as I say, I've never maintained it a weight because all the other times I've done it, as I say, I've been, there's been a bit of quick fix in there of either eating lower calories that was never sustainable or the last time I lost weight, I trained to do the Great North Run, so at one point I was running 30, 40 miles a week. Okay. So I could get a bit lazy with my diet because the calorie burn yeah. from that, an extra chocolate bar here and there, didn't really make a huge amount of difference. Yeah. So I was always probably going to go back because I'd never, never switched my lifestyle yeah. as such where it's the first time I ever, I have ever felt comfortable and confident in what I do that if I train at least three times a week, hit my steps and stick to, you know, the collection of meals I have, it would be hard to go back. Right. Because it, it just wouldn't happen because it's balanced. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say why not, but you answered yeah. it there. So I would, have, I would have to choose to go off the rails, really, or stop, yeah. stop doing... The habits are ingrained now. Yeah, I would have yeah. to stop doing one of the things and then say, yeah, now I've got a dog not going for a walk. It's not going to be an it's option. Not, yeah, yeah. I didn't even write in here, you know, um, steps. <laughs> you like the steps queen. <laughs> I do a lot of steps. Yeah. The last couple of months, well, since November, since I got the dogs, they've been down on what they had been. Uh -huh. But I still probably average 13,000 a day. A day. Yeah. Which you've already covered about how you fit them in around those commuting times of what you've, yeah. what you've done in the past. I mean, at the minute, I do three shorter walks a day with the dog. So I take her out before work, take her out yeah. for a short walk at lunchtime, and then one when I finish work before I come to the gym. And, and for, those, for those people who, a lot of people actually don't believe in steps, mm -hmm. by the way, if you've, if, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but um, for those people who don't get in like quite, even 10,000, how is that, like how, how much of an impact do you think that's had 
on, say, the weight loss and maintaining? Uh, massive, actually. Yeah. I mean, it, if I talk to some of the new people, I always say it, it is the steps that make the difference. Yeah. The, gy the gym's great, uh -huh. but equally, you know, if you don't get your steps in. I, for me, my maintenance at the minute, if I train and average about 13, 14,000 steps, I can have about 1,900, 2,000 calories. Yeah. If I didn't do that, I'd probably be at around 1,500. Yeah. So if I didn't hit my steps, I would have to reduce what I had by yes. two or 300 calories a day, probably. Yeah. And that, that is a big difference. It, of course it is, yeah. it, but people, but people don't say just two biscuits is a big difference. Yeah, as but is it, it. And it is the calories, <laughs> like what comes in know, and out. When you again think about looking, I suppose I look at food a bit differently sometimes now. More in a, how long, a, like, do I really want that? I would have to go for a six mile walk to burn off that yeah, amount yeah, of calories. Yeah. And some people might think that's a bit sad or a bit like, oh, you, you know, you're not having nice things because of that. And it's not that, that's not the case at all. It's just, knowing how to balance and as if I didn't do my steps I'd have to have a lot less yeah. and I wouldn't have lost the weight I did without hitting the kind of steps I do I mean I do some virtual online walking challenges yes, and do. things which I would do the walking anyway but I think it comes in on days when the weather's a bit miserable like in the winter when it's cold yeah you would probably do a little bit shorter walk or not go out for that second or third walk because it's just not very nice but because I've got a challenge and I've set myself goals of when I want to finish them, it makes me still hit those targets on those days. Yeah, brilliant. And last year I set myself a challenge to walk 10,000 steps every day, not just average them, yeah. actually walk them. Brilliant. I think I did 6.3 million steps last Total. year. Yeah, <laughs> which sounds crazy, doesn't so it? It's a crazy amount. And this year I've upped it to, I want to do 11K steps 11,000 steps per yeah. day. okay like yeah. but that's daily as well yes. yeah, yeah yeah because Not, i mean again, even the post this morning i said yeah. about average yeah but that's that's that I, I i've actually taken that on board i've sort of pinched it in a way because i'm actually looking at mine because sometimes where i'm working from home now i'm trying to do what you're doing so yeah. thanks for that by the way <laughs> <laughs> and as i said yes you might have to say get out of bed half an hour earlier on the morning to go and get a half hour walk in but yeah. that half hour walk would be 3,000, 4,000 steps, yeah. depending on how fast you walk. 200 calories burned. Yeah. Yeah, before you start a big chunk of your daily amount done yeah. before you've done anything else. So. And then the pot run around could just bring it up yeah, in any way. Yeah, pot run off. Like, if I'm out shopping, I won't. Like, if I go to, say, the Arneson Centre, I'll park the car in one spot and walk to all of the shops around rather than, like, go to Sainsbury's and drive across to the next shop. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I find ways like that to uh -huh. fit in extra steps if I think I'm going to be short on a day. I'll, if I get to the gym early, sometimes I come in and just have a chat. Sometimes I'll go for a walk around the block or yeah. walk over to Tesco to get a couple of bits and come back. Yeah. You've listened, haven't you? Mm. You have. You've really listened. <laughs> When you listen, it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, 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 it is. I, you, you're, a, you're a little prize. Um, <laughs> I had a little thought among, amongst that. For the people who, like, um, oh, shit, where was my thought pattern gone? It was, um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm forgetting about it, but it might, it might come back. Um, so let's go. How, you, so you started on Carnage, obviously, I know the, yeah. the lockdowns and that, but then you came back to Carnage. How has that program been? Like, how do, do you like it? Do you, how, how did you? Yeah, yeah? I, I really enjoyed it. And yeah. Again, I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for, I don't think, when I joined. And right. The first few weeks I was a bit like, what on yeah. earth have I let myself in for here? But it's all about doing what you can do uh -huh. and being the best you can be in the session. Yeah. And not looking around when you first join, especially of like the people who've been there a long time and yeah. are, you know, smashing out 40, 50 press-ups and you barely, <laughs> you can barely do one. Yeah. But I bet you there was other people in the session who was the same, even if they'd been here a while. Yeah, I think my very first day I was the only new person in the oh, session. Oh, yeah, okay, right. And I was, you know, in the group with some of the, you know, Katie B, Jennifer, Okay, right, Melissa. okay. <laughs> so, so that, you know, there, there were some good role models yes, to, yeah. to, to look up to. Uh -huh. um, but I'd say just don't be daunted at the start. Yeah. And, you know, 
it is a full body workout. Yes, yeah. After first week, despite you know being a rugby player <laughs> and things in the past, I felt like I'd been run over by a bus. Yeah. But it gets better, and you can see, you know, I could see myself getting stronger, fitter, things hurt less. I could yeah. Do more of everything. Well, I mean, you've you, I mean, you've went from um, especially with the knee issues. Mm. Um, I mean, you you wouldn't have been able to do like frog jumps or anything like that no, originally. I was going to say I had a lot of things were modified yeah. to work around it. And before I left Carnage to go across the barbell, uh -huh. I don't. There was only one exercise I got amended. And right. That was okay. Because of the shunt I've got for the yes. medical yeah, condition, yeah, yeah, I yeah. physically can't twist. Yeah. But everything else, yeah, frog. Unfortunately, can do, I can do frog jumps. You can jumps do everything now. now yeah. yeah. You actually did. Did you get the burpee record or am I just, when we did the burpee challenge that one? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And imagine that, like imagine from your first day walking in here, you're thinking, fucking hell, who's all these? Mm. And oh, thinking, yeah. I'm going to be able to beat them on an actual burpees in three minutes challenge yeah, it, a few years later. It's mad. Actually. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's, because um, the thing is, we always measure results as in generally physique, body weight and all the rest of it. Um, but it, it is like, I mean, just a few weeks later, you'll have been able to hold a plank for like 20 mm. seconds longer, something like that. Yeah. And we never really... Um, and then eventually a 10 minute plank. <laughs> yeah, I've got to die, a 10 minute plank. Let me check you out. <laughs> I've only ever done a five one. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's things like that. And it, it's like, it's amazing because I've always said, I wish I could record people's first session yeah. for them, but I mean, that would be like really intrusive because you've already shit in your pants when you're walking mm, through here. Yeah. And then to say, right, I'm just going to record your whole first session so in a few years' time I can show you it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be intrigued to see, like, if I, if I put 84, kilo, uh, 84 pounds, pounds on yeah. and tried to do the same session now, yeah. like, what it would actually feel like. Your calorie burn had gone through the roof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Would>. <laughs> yes, that's the one thing I have noticed. The lighter I've got, obviously, I have to work at that a little bit harder to burn yeah, the same course. calories as yeah. well. So, but I suppose it's twofold. I walk faster now because it's easier. So, yeah. in and the same further. time that I go for a walk, mm -hmm. I do further distance. So, yeah. I probably do, but I still burn. Like, if I'm out for an hour, I burn slightly less calories now on an hour's of walk course. than yeah, I used yeah. to. But again, it's understanding that. And, knowing that's the case. Yeah, it, 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 it's right because we, we still get people who, one person's bigger, one person's smaller. How comes them are burning more calories, mm. mate? Because they're fucking three stone heavier than you. That's yeah. why, yeah. but it looks like they've hardly moved. But I know, but if you're moving three stone around yeah. on, on your back, you'll, yeah. you'll sharp find out why. I would why. probably struggle through a carnage session. Yeah. Now if I put 84 pounds back on top of me. We need to figure out how we can do it. <laughs> I'd have to walk around with one of those <laughs> tires on. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> It was a 60 kilo, I think 60 kilos, I don't know, but we, we could figure it out somehow <laughs> from there. Um, so the, obviously, yeah, that's, I mean, that's brilliant results within the carnage. If, if, you, if you really think back on everything, how's barbell? Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, and something, a lot of people had said I should give a go and that I would enjoy Did we? It. <laughs> Not just you, but, yeah. you know, the likes of Katie and people yes, who yeah, I trained. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, originally, originally trained and, with, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They moved across and were uh -huh. enjoying it and kept saying, you know, right. come across and have a go, see what you think. And how's your weight's gone up on that? Because that, that is probably easier to measure than that. So how's your weight's gone? Yeah, everything's moving up. But again, right. you kind of realise, obviously, certain parts of your body are just stronger and better right. at doing yes, it. yeah. Like, this week, I finally did five sets of reps on the bench press, but I'd been stuck at the same weight for like And what five, weight was that? 42 kilos. Wow, yeah. And I was just stuck. I yeah. could get through the first three sets, and then after that, right. my arms were just like, no. But that's a lot of weight. I was going to if, say. If, you, if you're bench pressing five reps at 40 kilos, that means mm. you've pressed 200 kilos within 15 seconds. Yeah. So, no, <laughs> I mean, pretty much my weight and everything yeah going up and you know like the back squat picking uh -huh. that up i'm like that just feels heavy <laughs> and what's that it was 85 kilos okay yeah that is heavy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's 13 and a half stone on your back yeah so yeah it's yeah. a lot more than the 85 pounds you've lost <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah it as you say you probably see a bit more progression in the numbers i mean yeah in carnage if you count your reps and stuff you know, you suddenly realise you've done 20 press-ups instead of yeah. the 15 you did 
the month before. So you can keep track that way, but... But generally, the only thing you're counting is carnage, them 10 seconds going down. Yeah. <laughs> like, so when's, the, when's would, me rest? I did used to count just did sometimes you? to right. give myself a target, Data I background. to, to yeah. aim at. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so was it, do you know when you, obviously, because you've seen them over here, like, mm. so when you started, and then you must have, so it was the same girls, really? Yeah. So you've seen the same girls over there. Did you have that, shit, these are all stronger than us as well? Or not? No, I don't think or so. Or not at that I point? Say, for me, probably the whole thing was about improving my health. Right, okay. And the realisation that all I needed to focus on was me. And not right. worrying yeah. about... I say, when you first go in the class and you see, as I say, people doing loads, you're like, wow. Yeah. But actually, it was about improving me and not worrying about, you know, who can lift more weight than me. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's different. You know, they are, I've, yeah, big. I've got injuries from years of playing sport that you know, my body just doesn't do some things and I can't do anything about that. Yeah. But it's working with that. Yeah. And as I say, you know, yeah, you see some of them lifting crazy weights. Uh -huh. But, you know, that, that's, what, that's their capability. And yeah. I just focus on... It's lovely to see, isn't it? Oh, like, yeah, we, it's everyone's great. And everybody, great. everybody yeah. here supports each other to be the best they can be. Yeah. And that's, that is all that matters. It doesn't matter if I'm lifting... 20 kilos more or less than somebody yeah. else. It's what, what's my limit? And yeah. pushing myself to what I can manage to do. And we haven't found the limit yet. No, and still, st it's, still it's finding where they are. Still going on. They are, so. And, and that, um, where you're quite maintaining your weight and stuff like that, but your strength's still going up. So that's, yeah. it's quite intriguing because we always get to a certain point mm -hmm. of them we would have to say, up your calories yeah. to go further, yeah. but then it's a total mental head battle. Um, yeah. But we're not at that point. <laughs> my, my weight does fluctuate at the minute by, mm -hmm. I don't know, probably within a half stone limit. Yeah. And I can deal with that now. I right. would have struggled in the past, but I, you know, I've actually stopped weighing myself as much. Right, okay. It's the first time in my life. I'm not a slave to the scales in some way, shape or form. Of right. Either watching them slowly going up thinking, oh no, or yeah. desperately trying to get them to go back down. I'm a bit like, if I just trust the process and keep doing what I'm doing, I don't need to weigh myself every day. Right. So what, how often do you weigh yourself then? Uh, three times a week I do it now. Oh, right. I thought you were going to say once every four months. Oh, God, no, I haven't, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't gone that far yet. Oh, so it, it used to be daily. I used to weigh myself okay, every right, single okay. day. Okay, right, okay. And I'll probably get go down to... Once, once a week. Right. Because, as I say, day to day actually doesn't really matter. Yeah. I'm trying now to focus more on how I feel. Right. And if I feel physically good uh -huh. and, you know, my clothes fit fine. Yeah. The number on the scales actually really isn't that important. Right. Yeah, you know, it isn't. It, if, I, if I do what I know I need to do and I keep doing it, it can't really go wrong. Right. It would only be if I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing that I would need to worry, really. Right. Okay. I'll lo I'll lo I'll lo I'm loving this, by the way, mate. Mm. <laughs> I did miss out this bit. Um, so this was the thing I heard on the podcast, what I said about prior to this. Um, and it said, like, uh, say, from being an overweight person to um, being a leaner person... Um, they don't see themselves as that leaner person until one to two years later. Do you still see yourself as the heavier person, or do you now? Have you, have you, has it been enough time to see yourself as now as this is me? I would say it's probably only the last, probably six months to a okay. year that I do see this as me now. I would struggled at first to go into the shops and buy like. A small or yes. an extra small, yeah, or like yeah, when we're ordering clothes here, yeah, just saying, Oh, I'll have a have small, a small? Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, where, yeah, now it is that that is what size I am, yeah. And it, it took a long time to get there because it they were sizes I've never, never purchased in my life, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it does take a while actually. And as I say, when people would look at me before and after pictures and be like, oh, I bet you can't believe you look like that. I was like, yeah. no, I actually struggled more with the now. Yeah. Because it just wasn't, it, it wasn't 
an image of me that, I, that I'd had before. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to find that with a few people. I think like um, a few people who have lost a lot of weight, like recently within the clients, like, because when I heard that on the podcast, it was like, ah, right, like, like, they're going to still see themselves as this person, which is a, a lot of ingrained habits within yeah. that person who they were before. And like the habits podcast, what I did with Dan, like explains a lot in that mm. type of thing. So it's going to be intriguing to ask this question to some of them people as well. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I don't have any full length mirrors in the house. It wasn't particularly a choice. I just haven't. And right. obviously I don't go around taking many pictures of myself. Yeah, either, yeah. So I think for a long time, because <laughs> I didn't really always see myself. It was only if I was in a shop and caught myself in a mirror or whatever that yeah. I would see me and I'd be like, oh. Crikey, <laughs> yeah. that's a big change. It is, yeah, because it is because you've seen yourself for so long, like as that um, bigger person. Yeah, yeah. because I, obviously I've, I'm, I I put weight on um, when I worked abroad, yeah. um, but I was quite young at the time, like uh, well, I quite young, uh, 21, 22, um, but I sharp, I like, got it off yeah. type thing, so I was never like p particularly overweight for a long period. Mm. So I, I, so I won't understand yeah. it, and that's why I'm I'm intrigued by it. Yeah. Yeah. But equally, I suppose sometimes I think I put it in a post I did on Facebook at the start of right. the year that actually that image can, you know, everyone's oh you look amazing, but for me the weight loss and everything's more about the change inside. Yes, yeah. Of doing things differently, uh -huh. making different choices, and the health benefits. You yeah. Know, don't get me wrong; it's great to have lost the weight and yes, buy smaller of course, yeah, things, yeah, yeah. But it's actually more. The changes inside and being able to do it that means the most actually yeah well, because, because no matter what if, if if no matter what for these people who, who, who do the lose the weight and maintain you change pe person mm. you, yeah. you see yourself differently people see you differently as well yeah. subconsciously or un un like because if someone was now talking to you from from uh who didn't know you let's say mm. and the, the new year physique they would be speaking to you differently if you were yeah. a, l a larger person. Yeah, and I've experienced that again. I think it was when I was talking to Sarah. Yes, Hers, that's right. That, yes, you know, yes. Now, if I right, tell yeah. someone I ran the Great North Run, they ask, "What time did I do it?" In? Uh -huh. If I'd said it previously, be like, "Oh, did you do it for charity or something?" Because I didn't look like someone who would run the Great North Run. Where, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd never do it again. But <laughs> equally, now they would probably more ask, "How fast did I do it?" Because I look more like yes. what they would think somebody running the Great North Run would look like. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mm. it the, yeah, exactly. That's a good one, that yeah, actually. So, yeah. What people ask you when you tell them things about your past, uh -huh. depending on what you physically look like, does change. I've, that is one thing I've definitely noticed. It's, yeah, and in such short space of time, so you'll be still fresh, like mm. if you wouldn't ask us that then. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mad. Mad. Right then, last one. So what's the number one piece of advice uh, you would give to someone to live a leaner, healthier lifestyle? Be honest with yourself. Right. And, you know, accept you've got to work at it. You know, you've got, you've got to make choices. You can't. I, 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 I suppose it's an old saying, and I never understood it before, if you can't out-train a bad diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that nutrition is important getting the right Very. balance of calories. You know, I look back at my past and some of my worst eating habits. Even if I'd run a marathon a day, I probably wouldn't have burned off all the calories I'd eaten. And yeah. no one's got time to run a marathon a day. <laughs> so I think you've got to put the work in. You know, you can have the best program, the best trainers, the best support like we get here, but there's only you can actually do it. Yeah. Nobody can do it for you. And if you're not in the space to put in the work and make the choices you need to make, you're probably not going to get to where you want to be. Yeah. And it, I think it's finding what works for you as well and not getting sucked in or, you know, trying to be and doing what other people are doing because it might not necessarily work for you exactly the same. Yeah. You've got to be in a calorie deficit if you want to lose weight, but what that looks like for different people. You know, I could hand over what my 1,700 calorie a day diet was to mm -hmm. somebody else and they would probably hate it most people yeah because i ate i ate all my protein i'm not mm -hmm. a protein shake person so i think it's find what works for you and don't worry about whether that's what other people do or not 
Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Look forward to the rest of your journey. I don't have a cheers. I'm oh. sure it will shake. Thank you very much, Mrs. Thank no you. Problem.